Munich. Hello. As we were walking here, there was this other demonstration for Ukraine with the Ukrainian flags, and I saw a NATO flag. Did you see that NATO flag? My goodness. I was thinking, do these people realize who Putin thanks every day in his prayers? Who is the best friend of Vladimir Putin? Joe Biden. Because it is Joe Biden that promised to take Putin to an international criminal court that the United States do not recognize. And by doing so, giving Putin the green light for a never-ending war and for convincing the Russian people that they have to fight against the Americans in Ukraine. So, if you really want to continue the war that Putin is driving forever, you have to support Biden. Now, tell me, who is Biden's best friend? Vladimir Putin. Because Vladimir Putin gives him the best argument so that people don't vote for Trump. And the best argument for the never-ending war which enriches Texan natural gas and oil producers who are selling you natural gas because you're not buying it from Russia. They, you know, Putin and Biden are the best friends. They may not like each other, but they need one another. Who created Putin? NATO. NATO created Putin with their support of the killing of 250,000 people in Chechnya. Remember in 2001? They supported him. They created the monster. Monsters are hugging each other and dancing together. If you were Putin, if you were Zelensky, if you were Biden, if you were Netanyahu, what would your worst nightmare be? What would your nightmare be if you're Netanyahu or Biden? Peace. Because peace would mean that you're becoming politically bankrupt and at the same time that the people who support you, the arms industry, the weapons producers, they will become bankrupt. The person who was holding up the NATO flag, if you ask him or her, why are they holding it? They will say, because NATO is protecting us. They believe that NATO offers them an umbrella, a shield that protects them. Well, NATO doesn't protect us. NATO is like the mafia. The mafia creates insecurity to sell you security. The Mafia create threats to sell you protection. Eh? It's a protection racket. NATO creates the wars. NATO creates the monsters like Putin. NATO created Saddam Hussein. They create all the monsters with which then to justify their own monstrosities and the fact that we, Europeans, have become their slaves, their vassals. There is no such thing as Europe. We are a colony of the United States of America. We are a colony of the oil producers, of the fossil fuel industry, of the banking sector, of Wall Street, of the Frankfurt Bank bankers, of the European Central Bank. We together, Germans, Greeks, Italians, Irish, we are all together their slaves. This is why it's so important that you are here today. Now, I've got a question. Why is the political spectrum in Germany so complicit in the genocide? Why are they so complicit in the wars? Why do they keep saying yes, whether they are the ZDU, the CSU, the FDP? 
even on parts of the left, definitely the SPD, definitely the Greens. Why are they allowing Europe, Germany, to deindustrialize? Why are they allowing your country to fall back? Let me tell you why. There's no conspiracy here. It's really very simple. If you own Mercedes-Benz, you really want to sell your cars to the United States of America. If the United States of America has a big deficit, because of that deficit, they buy everything German industry, Chinese industry, Japanese industry produce, and they pay them with dollars. And what does Mercedes-Benz do with the dollars? They take them to Wall Street, and they invest in America. Who is their constituency? Who do they care about? Not you, not the people of Germany. They care about Wall Street. They care about Washington. They care about Biden. We are a colony with the complicity of our own political class. This is why it is important that you are here. I salute you for being here. Because all the political parties, every single one of them that are in the Bundestag, have dropped the ball. They have let Germany down. The people of Germany, the people of Greece, the people of France have been let down by our political system. This is why it is the people of Germany, it is the people of Greece, it is the people of France that need to take to the streets in order to reclaim the political and the civic space. What you're doing today is not a demonstration. What you're doing today is political agency. You are democracy. You are the demos that needs to be put back into the democracy that the political leaders, together with the warmongers and the bankers, have eradicated a very long time ago. <laughs> Friends, comrades, I cannot possibly believe that today, in this fine city, there is a conference on security by the people selling insecurity and armaments. And that we have this discussion in the media, on television, about our security in Germany or in Greece and our prosperity. I can't sleep at night. I cannot think of my prosperity when we have 15,000 children that are injured without known relatives in Gaza. This is not a possibility for any ethical person to sleep at night and to talk about our security. When insecurity, inhumanity, illegitimacy is the order of the day in the land of Israel, in the land of Palestine. Let me finish with something I remembered earlier as I was walking up here. I remember it was 1982 and I was in Warsaw, in Poland. And I remember, you remember back then, Solidarnosc, the movement against the communist regime. And I remember the Solidarnosc dissidents had written a slogan on a bridge, which I thought was very clever. Because what they did in a communist regime, they had quoted Karl Marx. And it said, a people who oppresses another people is forging its own chains, Karl Marx. That was a brilliant, brilliant repost to the Communist Party of Poland. That is the case for Israel today. It is the case for Russia. It is the case for Turkey. It is the case for Greece. If we oppress or we are complicit in the oppression of anyone, we can never be free. None of us can be free if the people are oppressed. I have been told by my comrades and friends that in the state of Bavaria, I'm not allowed to mention two bodies of water in the Middle East. Something that looks like water that is flowing. I can't tell the word. I can't say the word of water flowing. 
and another body which is not flowing, which is large and it's part of the Mediterranean. And I'm not allowed to say that we need universal human rights and political freedoms between these two bodies of water. So let us all proclaim the need to fight for universal freedoms and universal human rights between every body of water in Israel and in Palestine. Let us together rage, rage, and rage again for the dying of the light in Palestine, in Munich, in Holland, in everywhere there are people who are breathing and living. Let us rage, let us rise up against the dying of humanism. Carpe diem. Free, free Palestine, so that we can free Germany, so we can free Europe, so we can free the world.